1987, Toru Narihiro marked a significant achievement in his career at Intelligence System. Two years earlier, he was hired to convert the software from Formicon Disk System to the NES more popular ROM crashes format. It was no easy task, but Narihiro was up for the challenge. He learned the new system quickly and was able to convert the software successfully, which impressed his client at Nintendo. Due to his work and dedication, Narihiro and his company Intelligence System has become Nintendo in-house accessory programming unit. They provide the company with system to and staff to build, fix, and port Nintendo software. They were responsible for ensuring that all of Nintendo games were running smoothly on the NES and other console. But today was a particularly special day for Narihiro. After months of hard working and dedication, he was finally finishing his first game in the role of lead programmer. The game title was Famicom War, and it was available on Nintendo Entertainment System. It was a groundbreaking game that blended elements of strategy and simulation, and it was unlike anything that had been seen before on the NDS. Narihiro and his team at Intelligence System were all feeling optimistic and motivated. They had put their blood, sweat, and tears into the development of Famicom War, and it had paid off. They had succeeded in creating a game that was not only fun to play, but also pushed the boundary of what was possible on the NDS. Now, with Famicom War complete, the development team at Intelligence System was ready to move on to their next project. They were eager to gain more experience in game creation and continue pushing the boundary of what was possible. They had set their sight high, aiming to create a game that were even more extensive and advanced than anything they had ever seen before. It was going to be a challenging journey, but with their skill and passion, they knew they could make it happen. After the success of Famicom War, the development team at Entertainment System has to come up with a new and even more successful game. Their future and reputation were on the line, and the stakes were higher than ever before. That's when an unknown designer, Sojo Kaga, was brought on board. Kaga immediately presented several intriguing concepts, but one in particular caught the team attention. He pointed out that while role-playing games had good story but limited player urgency, technical game has numerous characters but weak storytelling. Kaga proposed that they create a tactical game with a deep plot and likable characters, while also maintaining the entertaining and engaging gameplay of Famicom Wars. To differentiate from the contemporary war setting of Famicom War, Kaga suggests drawing inspiration from classic mythology for the game location and character. During the early state of the story development, two different dragons served as an antagonist, the Earth Dragon Gaia and the Water Dragon Neptune. The team were excited about the idea and gave their approval, but they are also feeling the weight of the responsibilities on their shoulder. They knew that the success of this game would determine the future of intelligence system and their reputation in the gaming industry. Kaga's next step was to persuade Nintendo to assist with publishing and developing the game. Without Nintendo resources, the team would not be able to build the game on their own. Kaga entered the Nintendo office with a game design document in hand, outlining the story, major character, and gameplay mechanic. The project was known by its working title, Battle Fantasy Fire Emblem. Kaka shattered the game was inflamed by Kure Software First Queen, released in 1988. The meeting with Nintendo was a make or break moment for Kaga and the team. They had poured their heart and soul into the development of this game, and the fate of their company hung in the balance. Thanks to Nintendo's success track record of collaborating with Intelligent System, the company decided to co develop the game. Kaga returned to his team with good news but the relief and joy they felt were tempered by the realization that the hard work was far from over. They have to put everything they had into this project to make it success. Nintendo has also provided Kaga with a team of collaborators to assist in the completion of the project. The project was now a joint effort between Intelligent System and Nintendo. It was then that the original team responsible for developing Fire Emblem was formed. Keisuke Teresaki, who at the time has only directed one other game titled Solar Strike, was the one who oversaw its production as a director. The game producer was Genpei Yokoi, who had previously collaborated with Tarasagi on the production of Solar Strike. The game primary designer and story writer were Sosho Kaga, and the ship programming was Toru Narihiro. Toru Osawa, Nagotaka Onishi, Satoshi Mashida, and Toshitaka Maramasu made up the Wishu team. Finally, Yuka Sushiyoko composed the soundtrack, with technical assistance from Hirokazu Tanaga. 
The first development team wasn't very large, therefore several members were responsible for more than one aspect of the project. The programmer Narihiro admit that he often assists in the creation of in-game sound effects. With the team operating at maximum capacity, the future appeared bright for the Fire Emblem crew. But with such great dream and passion, they would have to make sacrifice to continue their journey. One major obstacle the team faced was that Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light has too much data for a single NES cartridge. However, Intelligent System was not willing to give up, and they succeeded in overcoming this obstacle by making use of the area of memory normally used for game save. Narihiro explained, The program in a typical simulation game uses a lot of memories. Our game exceeds the capacity of the main memory available in the NES unit, so we figured out a way to increase the capacity by accessing the portion of the memory dedicated to saving the games. Using this memory together with the main memory, we were able to get the game running. Despite their success in getting the game up and running, the game's scope and ambition were simply too vast for the time it was released and for the capability of the NES. Kaka has envisioned multiple scenarios to ease the linear nature of the campaign. However, this could not be implemented. The original aim was to generate set-piece graphic for a critical story point, much like simulation title on PC games. The first script has Marth kneeling next to Jorgen Bloody Corpse, as another has two characters running away from the ambush. In order to make room for a high-end graphic, the team decided to use the MMC-3 memory ships. For those who don't know, MMC ships are special ships made for NES cartridge by different video game developers. These ships made the original console more powerful and let developer add a feature to the NES game that the original console can do on it. However, the team discovered that the ship only has one megabyte of memories and was forced to simplify the image and aesthetics, resulting in the elimination of due to technology limit. Neptune, one of the boss dragon that the team was looking forward to developing, was also scrapped, and Gaia would evolve into the character named Meduse. Because of the lower emphasis on visual, the game was not aesthetically impressive, which Kaga and other team members later regret. This was a heavy price to pay for the team, as they had to sacrifice their vision for the game in order to make it work within the limitation of the technology at the time. As the development of the game progressed, the team at Intelligent System continued to refine and improve upon the gameplay mechanic. They added a new feature such as an ability for characters to gain experience points and level up. The game also featured a turn-based fighting system with limited number of player and enemy units each taking turns and moving around a grid-based battlefield. Battles were won by player defeating key opponent units such as a commander and other boss character. The game also included a specialized war arena during combat where the conflict was fought in real time. Player could stop into town and find hidden vendors to stock up on supply like potion, weapon, and armor. Each character had its own set of unique weapons and equipment, and those items had limited lifespan before they broke. Currency was only available for some scripted or player-driven events, as well as wagering on arena combat. As the story of the game went on, player took charge of March and his growing army as they fought their way across the continent of Arcania. The game advanced linearly, with the plot dictating which map were unlocked and play on what occasion. The different character classes give each playable character special skill in battle, like being able to ride a horse or use magic. A unit class impacts its range of movement and strength on the battlefield. Mount of Flying Unit has higher mobility, Asher had a greater assault range, and Fully Armored Character has better resistance. Each character has a predetermined class, and each time a unit gains a level, its attributes grow at random. There are a total of 52 characters that may be acquired by the player as they progress through the games. The permanent feature was one of the most important and memorable part of the game. If a character died in combat, they were considered permanently dead and couldn't take part in any more mission for the rest of the story. If Marv is killed in combat, the game was over. This made the game feel more real and tense because players had to think carefully about what they did and plan ahead to keep their character alive. After months of hard work and dedication, the game finally ready to release. The team and intelligence system couldn't wait for players to experience the game they had created. They knew it would be a challenging and emotional journey, but they were confident that it would be one that players would remember for years to come.
However, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon of the Blade of Light faced a number of early setbacks and criticism upon its initial release in 1990. Many publications heavily criticized the game for being difficult to understand, and players complained about the graphic. The game received negative reviews from critics and had poor sales during the first two months on the market. It was a difficult time for the team at Intelligent System, who had poured their heart and soul into the game and were now facing disappointment and regrets. However, the general public has more favorable impression of the games, and word of mouth helped boost the sale. The game popularity began to rise again about six months after its initial release, thanks in part to a popular journalist who wrote a column on the game for Famitsu. Sale of the game picked up and more players discovered the game and began to appreciate its unique gameplay mechanic and deep story. Despite the initial criticism, Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and The Blade of Light went to become one of the most popular and enduring games in the tactical playing genre, with 329,087 copies sold as of 2002. It was the third best selling game in the series. The success of the Fire Emblem series led to the remake of Shadow Dragon and The Blade of Light for the Nintendo DS, which was released and sold all over the world for the first time. In retrospect, it is generally agreed that the game was instrumental in popularizing the tactical role-playing genre as a whole, and its success helped pave the way for many more successful games in the Fire Emblem series. The team at Intelligent System has faced a difficult journey to get there, but in the end, their hard work and determination pay off and they created a game that would be remembered as a classic and a defining moment in the history of Japanese role-playing games. I am a YouTuber who enjoys reviewing games and creating video essay on various video game topics. On my channel, you'll find contents about JRPG as well as interesting and unusual game information. Check out my channel and stick around if you enjoy engaging with this type of content. 